Hello again. So I haven't been working on posting my backlog videos or working on projects like I should be. I'm going to be getting back to that fairly shortly, but I was going to give this update very quickly. My distraction has been this. It's a capacitor bank charger and dumper I've designed and built. It's extremely simple and you can in fact make your own with only a few dollars worth of parts. It all started when I was working with inductors. I was having some fun making various transformers and so on and finally decided to test what I had to make a coil gun. Now the bank is comprised of 15 470 microfarad capacitors. So while this isn't that much, it is still exciting and I can shoot a piece of metal several inches, which is kind of cool at least. Now while there isn't much there, it's still quite dangerous. Capacitors hold both current and voltage. And while this isn't that much in the grand scheme of supercapacitors, such since these aren't any, I still won't be shorting it with my finger to demonstrate. You'll kind of see why I don't want to do that. Let's take a physical overview of the box. I can't even realistically say the magic happens here. It's very simple, and in fact, this could be replaced with just the alligator leads you see coming off of it. Inside of here, I have a 30 volt DC power supply and a switch that controls whether or not it's disconnected or it's charging the bank. Over on this side is the capacitor side. There's a standby mode, and then you flip the switch and it dumps the bank straight through these posts into whatever you have it plugged into. Now there's no isolation between these two halves, meaning I could supply and charge it at the same time, which would be very dangerous as this would be basically generating a short. But it does allow me to do so if I wanted to without any safety interlocks in the way. Now this button is mostly placeholder, but this is actually a button that can short the supply while it's on standby. This is useful if you want to make sure that your supply in there after you turn it off from the wall is completely drained for any various reasons. So if you turn off your supply from the wall, you can just short out the supply for a little bit. Make sure there's no residual voltage inside of the box. It just connects over to this capacitor bank with two little wires. Excuse the mess on the breadboard, I've obviously been working on other projects. While this setup isn't ideal, it does work and get the job done. When I start working with much larger values, I'll switch to a better system. Inside we can see the horror of an organization. Mostly the fact that I use solid core wire, which could be useful later on, but currently makes it very difficult to open and close. It's also kind of just out there. I've at least soldered on the wires to the contacts on the switches, but that's not too safe anyway because I have it just open to where if you were to open the box you could touch it. Of course these screws in the back are just as dangerous since you could touch them quite as easily. Here's the 30 volt supply, and here's kind of the magic that makes this doable. I grabbed this one at a thrift store several hours away from my house, but I've recently been seeing these exact ones show up in ones near me. So I can kind of conclude they're very common. And realistically, they're not too extreme either. It's just a simple 30 volt power supply. There's not much current coming out of it, so it's nothing extreme or too dangerous on its own. It's still fairly close to lethal amounts, but you should hope that your body isn't completely covered in water and you'll probably be perfectly safe messing with it. Again, caution. The magic here is that you could make your own supply for extremely cheap. That was about a dollar. And the other ones I've seen were marked at a dollar. And then one obvious note is make sure that your capacitors have a higher voltage rating than your power supply. You don't want it to be the same or under, otherwise fire and so on. So the caps I have are rated at 50 volts. And so 30 volts is very conservative of me. Hooray. Right, now that the boring stuff's over, let's get to shooting things and blowing stuff up. Of course, it's really not too exciting at the moment, but it does work. We'll turn on our wall supply. You should make sure that you're in standby in both modes before you turn it on, of course, but oh well. So we'll charge at the capacitor bank. Useful to have a uh, current meter in line, which is actually what's probably going to be in the middle is a current meter. But of course, that'll be when I upgrade everything down the road and have much thicker wire and more isolation and protection. Now that it's charged up, we can fire. Hooray, it shot a piece of metal a very short distance. But it does work, so I like that. 
All this is is a single pair of Cat5 coiled up and then have a little straw insert just to make sure there's no friction on the metal. You want to kind of have the metal a little bit before the coil so it gets pulled through it. If it's sitting right in the middle, it'll probably just vibrate in place. So let's do that again. There we go, it shoots. Now let's kind of circumvent some of my safety and protection stuff here and attach leads directly to the capacitors. So now if I were to touch these together, it generates an instant short. Let's show why that's kind of significant. Here I have some wire attached onto the end of these alligator clips. Watch what interesting happens. That's quite a little spark. In fact, the first time I tried it with much shorter wire, it actually permanently welded them together. As you can see, that's quite a little spark and pop. It's like your own little miniature firework. Let's take a closer look at that. I'll set up the mic so you can hear it better. Let's see if by shortening the length of the wire I can make them weld again. I'd have to say that actually worked. They do of course still come apart, but it's quite novel at least. Something like blowing up an LED never gets old.